Okay, uh, it's uh, October 27th, 3 o'clock class, uh, ICS 415, and today it, uh, we are October 27th, so we're, uh, we, I've read, I've, uh, I've organized this a little bit, and uh, uh, in the last two or three weeks, we sort of dove right into the database, uh, introduction to Visual Studio and the database part. Uh, and we learned how to make uh, Windows, simple Windows, Windows Forms applications, form applications. And um, so now we're transitioning over and we're going to sort of look at ASP.NET a little bit more formally uh, with, the, with the textbook, along with, with the textbook. And I have my copy of the textbook here, which uh, you can get. And it's uh, this ASP.NET 4.6. And I'm quite sure 4.5. If, uh, if you can't afford 4.6, maybe you can get 4.5 probably much more cheaply or maybe even free. Uh, but anyway, um, we covered, uh, well, we pretty much already know the the basics of, of what's covered in chapter one here. And so today I'd like to uh, briefly breeze through that again and then uh, try to get into chapter two and do the exercise that's in chapter two. And so what we are, we're going to do, uh, you know, one and two this week, chapter three and four next week, five and six the week after, and then uh, some other important things here. We've covered uh, some of the gaps you see here we've actually covered earlier. And uh, so our, the next assignment is going to be uh, Campus Travel ASP.NET. Uh, that'll be the main part of it, but there's going to be a, some small little exercises along the way that uh, I'm going to start with one today. So um, if we look at um, <clears throat> Chapter 1 quickly, uh, we, we've, um, we've gone over this, and you recall it talks about you know, the components of a web application, the HTTP URL, and uh, how dynamic pages get get created. There's usually a database server there. And uh, the different types of technologies. Uh, one one uh, thing I'd like to re reiterate, and that is that um, uh, we are going to be learning uh, this this ASP.NET uh, web forms or this uh, these web applications and what what these are um, in the beginning of the semester we learn how to make web pages and then how to you know static HTML pages that don't really have any um, any um, information that would need to be passed between them and their their content was linked based just by hyperlinks in the documents. And then we uh, added functionality to, the, to that, those pages with PHP and connecting to, to a database. But still, each page was, was uh, sort of developed on its own. It, it, it can be updated on its own. And if you need to make a change to something on a page, uh, you just need to make the change on the page. And... Uh, uh, that usually did not mean you had to go and update anything else, or it certainly did not mean you had to recompile anything. Uh, and that that is really a description of this ASP.NET uh, MVC environment. And uh, it's much more like PHP or classic ASP. Uh, but the, the ASP.NET technology that we're going to study, uh, there's actually uh, compiling that goes on. And so you will, you'll see that I'll, I'll demonstrate examples uh, where, where we can s recognize that along the way um, as we go today. Uh, and um, so this is the .NET framework that we've, that we talked about yesterday. This, this talks about state, keeping track of states in a web application. And that's, you know, related to the, you know, to what I was just, talking about earlier where when you are when you the user are traversing through a website you're going from one page to the next and as far as you're concerned the last page that that 
was processed was the last page that you were at. But of course, for a web server, uh, where a web server is handling many use could could be handling many users at the same time. Uh, you know, your your pages would be interleaved with other pages, and so there's got to be some way of keeping track of state of the state. The, you know, like if you log into a website and and the and the website learns your name and your identity, and then you go to to a couple more pages, you of course want the website still to remember your your identity. So so as you go from page to page, there has to be some way of of uh, passing that information, and. Pardon me. Yeah, cookies. There's cookies, and it you it it always involves some sort of, of cookie. But but what kind of information is in the cookie? The uh, all the information that you care to pass uh, from page to page could be in the cookie. That's how it is in PHP. Uh, it, um, that's how it is with simple cookies. When you don't use states, uh, session. Yeah, you can use session stare variables in PHP, and what that is is that. You know, a single cookie gets put in your browser that identifies the browser, but then all the information that you want to store from state to state can be stored on the server. And, uh, you know, there's there's various levels of that, and th those are all taken care of uh, for you in, in uh, these ASP.NET classes. And so um, what we're going to do today is we're going to create this, this little uh, 401k future uh, calculator application, which is the same application that we uh, have seen, uh, which we covered in, uh, well, uh, we're still in chapter one here. So, so I'll demonstrate this quickly again to, for review. And then when we get into chapter two, we're actually going to um, just, you know, recreate this application again. Uh, so I'm going to open up I'm going to open up a chapter, uh, the chapter one application here, which was, let's see if I got it here. It's in my, everybody should have this. Uh, you can just start the application right here. Uh, this is the chapter, this is the, Chapter one exercise, which I was just talking about, and with this uh, application, uh, this is simply to sh sort of show you where all of the different uh, parts are. Uh, here, uh, in this app, uh, when when you open it up for the first time, there's uh, none of these pages are going to be open. It's probably going to look like this. It'll look like this probably. And uh, this is familiar. We've got so server explorer over here, solution explorer over here, and then properties if we're looking at properties of something. Um, let's just run this. Now, in, for, a, for a web, uh, an ASP.NET web application, you're, you're running it. When you run it, it starts up a web server, starts executing your web page. It starts, you know, it's, it starts it up, and then it opens up a browser and sets the browser to the default, the opening page or the home page of your, uh, of your application running on your little web server on your computer. So uh, let's just start this up. And of course, you can, you can choose what browser you want to use. And so I'm just going to choose Firefox here, and I'm going to run it. And when it runs, Firefox opens up, and we see our little application here. This is our application, and it's a future uh, value calculator. So if we're going to invest, you know, 100 bucks a month uh, at 3% interest rate for 10 years, we can click Calculate, and it'll calculate how much money you'll have at the end of 10 years. Uh, and we can clear it, and uh, you can set other things. And uh, there's also some other things. There's validation. Like, for example, if you just try to calculate now, it's going to say the interest rate is required. There should be something there. And the number of years is required. There should be something there. Uh, so that's, um, that's uh, um, 
a the simplest kind of validation where you say something's got to be filled in or not. Uh, but let's say we try to put in like a negative a negative interest rate. It's going to say uh, the interest rate must be between one and twenty. And if we try to put in a number of years, it's negative. It's going to say it's got to be between one and forty-five. And so once we uh, put in valid values and the the uh, the uh, validation goes away and we're able to calculate. Now, one of, the, uh, one of the things I want to show you is uh, you'll notice that this actually is a form submit. You see, when we click calculate, we see it actually goes to the server and comes back with this value. Uh, the, the reason we know that is because, and the reason we know it's not just JavaScript working there, is when you click calculate, we see that the value changes. But then when we view the source, let's view the source, View source, we see that that number 60654 is actually hard coded into this HTML document right um, someplace. Six oh six. There it is. Right here, future value here. Below the select, above the submit. Uh, and um, and so that's there. And 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 then the other th the other things, of course, when you look in here, you see that there actually is a form tag. It's actually method post, and it's got an action, and it's got a, a file there. And this file is actually, you know, itself. So it just it just comes back to itself. But uh, nonetheless, it's actually a form that, that submits to the server and comes back, and the server generates the new page and and uh, returns. Uh, there's see, there's all this validation code in here. There's a bunch of these uh, uh, this job. A lot of JavaScript, and there's also uh, more more JavaScript. This is JavaScript that's back at the server. You can tell it's at the same server, but when you click on that, and you see there's a bunch of JavaScript here that's back, actually back at the server. And so um, this is what the code looks like. From the browser's point of view, it, this is the code that was returned to the browser, and we see this is just all HTML. This is HTML that you you can copy all this out, and you should be able to, you know, or if you, actually, if you copy all this out and copy these out, you should be able to paste it back into another browser. Put these put these files here on another server, and uh, these files here on another server, and they should work. It should actually work. That looks quite a bit different than. If we close, let's shut this off. We can't, we cannot really find code that looks like this in any of the files here. It's not like when we're doing, you know, two months ago when we were writing PHP code and we we'd write some PHP code and uh, and then we, you know, same sort of thing. We'd view the we'd view the um, the code on the We'd view the source in the browser, and and it was just it was just HTML. But there, you knew that um, you know HTML, the actual PHP tags were were replaced with HTML, and it's really straightforward. You look inside your PHP tags, and you see there's echo statements in there or not. And if there's echo statements in there, you know that that's that's what has been replaced by the actual PHP uh, section of the code in the source document. So, um, um, so in for for PHP pages and for MVC uh, type ASP pages, uh, there there is sort of a compiling going on, but it's really a it's really an interpreting, and pages are interpreted uh, one page at a time. Also, pages are reinterpreted or recompiled, if you want to call it that, um, each time they're they're executed. So there's no real savings. 
Whereas with ASP.NET, uh, you you know with these with these applications, you know you you click you know you click run, and uh, there's a little bit of compiling that goes on, and then so what executes is different than what you um, than um, what you wrote in your source. And if you want to make changes, it's changes. It's not like you can make changes on the fly. Whereas it, whereas with a web page. You know, there could be a website that's live and, and you decide there's some text wrong on one of the pages, you know, way down there. You can just go in and edit the page and, and be done with it. And then there's no, there's no, it doesn't affect any of the other pages. So um, if, if we look at the Solution Explorer at this, at this particular, for this particular project, this is the Chapter 1 exercise, we see there's the default ASP.x page and that's this. And there's a little, little uh, world world icon there. And um, <clears throat> here, this is the page. We click on design, and we can see this is the design of the page, and we're going to actually create this. Uh, these are these um, validator controls. We've got some buttons here. We've got some labels, text boxes, uh, this drop-down list, they call it. And these are just labels. This is a table right here. This whole thing here is a table. And there's an H1 tag here, and there's an image here. So that's where, and now, so this is the page, and this is what the source looks like. So this is kind of the closest thing you'll get to the HTML. This is similar to, I guess, you know, you're looking at the PHP code. If you look at PHP, there's certain things here that you'll only see in ASP. These are ASP tags, ASP sections of code here. This is the range validator control and um, different controls here. Uh, so that's this, uh, that's what the source of the design page looks like this but but then there's what's called the code behind and that's this thing this as the same name except for it's got a dot cs for c sharp after it and this you're familiar with this this is c sharp code that that's basically the event handlers for the web form or the page and this is like the the code that goes along with um you know, each with uh, Windows form form uh, screens when we're when we're doing a desktop application. So we've got these uh, you know these namespaces here, these classes, and um, and then this is a page load, and this loads up the drop down menu for the selecting the the investment. Just loads it up. Uh, this is the event handler for the calculate button, and so on. There's an event handler. There's a clear. This is the one for the clear button, and so on. This calculates the future value. So that's this this code, this uh, the code behind page, and then there's there's other important files here that uh, for uh, the web page web pages that we will um, cover later. Uh, we might want to use that later. All right. Um, um, so let's let's see. Is that all I was going to cover? Yeah. Okay. Images is in a special folder here. Okay. So uh, that that is pretty much uh, what was covered in chapter one. It was basically just to introduce you to a simple application and to sort of show you where all the where all the pieces are, where, where all the components end up. Uh, so for chapter two. We are going to uh, now develop the same application here, but we're going to go more step by step and build it up from nothing. Okay, so um, if you open up, I'm going to close this. Actually, I'm going to close this whole thing. So if you if you open up Visual Studio again and you end up with this start page menu here, I'm going to create a new project. Click new project. And I'm going to name it, okay, so it's going to be a, um, uh, over on the left here, you want to go to Visual, uh, Visual C Sharp, Windows, Web, 
click on web and see what your choices are here and this is what we want we want a ASP.NET web application and we want to create a directory for the solution and I'm going to name this application uh, chapter 02 for chapter 2 that's what uh, we uh, they would like you to call it I guess future value uh, I'm going to put 300 because it was a 3 o'clock class and here we're going to uh, select our what kind of template we want to start out with and in this class uh, we're just going to be doing empty or empty plus web forms uh, way later on we might get into web API or some of these other things but for now it's just this uh, we don't need to host anything in the cloud uh, click OK and here we are starting out with nothing and let's see what the uh, book says uh, here we opened up the a new project and uh, this says we're gonna be dealing with these templates and down here and empty is that we're gonna do empty plus web forms that's what we just did and then if we get into some of these later chapters here we'll do some other uh, these web forms that adds you know security and logging in and that kind of stuff that's which is really what uh, what you'd be doing if you were in a more of a, in a commercial environment and then this is uh, for an MVC application there would be no uh, real, real compiling and then this is for web API's and we've we've made API's in PHP um, you know uh, when you're doing these ASP.NET Windows Forms, uh, you know, uh, Windows app, Windows Form, uh, sorry, Web Form applications and so on, uh, you know, and there's compiling going on, that kind of means that uh, you, ha you are stuck with kind of a homogeneous uh, system where if you have ASP.NET, it all has to be ASP.NET. One, one thing about MVC or, uh, a uh, PHP type uh, or flat, you know, legacy ASP pages and so on is because each page is kind of uh, by itself. That means you can mix technologies. And when you can mix technologies, that means it's a lot easier to um, keep legacy systems running. And um, so, you know, a lot of the systems that I work on now uh, there are systems that I've created for my clients back in the late 90s, early 2000, uh, and there's old systems, or it's, it's still Linux, but the languages are old. And uh, But because each page is like one page at a time, uh, now when I make improvements to those old websites, I do everything in PHP. And so lots. So you're you're clicking through the website, and if you look up in the URL, you'll see... The extensions on the files uh, might be different because there's different underlying technologies, uh, but but that's okay. Um, for uh, these types of applications, they're going to be um, they're going to be more homogeneous. Anyway, so uh, so next we're going to uh, create a web form. Oh, okay. Now let's create a new page. Okay, here we are with this web application, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a is that what we do? We create a new page? Yes. Yes, we create a new page. Let's create a new page. Click over here on the project, do a right click, and you can just do add web form. And I'm going to name it default. And so now over here, I've got a uh, default page, and it comes up like this. Looks like this. It says where the code behind file is and everything. Uh, we can click on design. Oh, we see it's just a, a form with a div inside. And so when we look over here on design, we see it's just a div section here. So that's what a blank. Uh, but that's what our blank page is going to start out looking like. 
Uh, we've added a new project uh, to an existing web form. And we see this is what it looks like. Just like this. That's where we are. Uh, this, this here describes, uh, let's see, the size of the window. You can place the mouse over one of the boundaries and drag, and drag it and so on. Line numbers, you can add. Well, that's nice. You can add line numbers. Okay, let me, uh, let me go back here. Uh, can, we, can you size this thing? Oh, that's a nice. I didn't even realize you could do that. Makes things easy. Uh, and uh, notice here that, okay, so that's that. You look at the source. Uh, this is how it got bigger. And uh, we can split. And that way we can see the code up here and the actual design screen down below. Okay. So now, um, have we made any... Add a folder to the web application. Okay, let's... Um, Let's do that. So we have this web application here, and we're going to actually, the reason we're going to add a folder is because we're going to add an image. And we don't want to just have the image file hanging around here. We want to create a, a nice folder and put images all on our folder, you know, like how we do on websites. So let's uh, click, click on the project again. Do right-click and do Add Folder. And I'm going to name it Images. And then, here it is, now I'm going to add an image that I'm going to put on my screen, and it's going to be that Muroc, it's going to be this Muroc thing. Where is it? Oh, that's how you start it. Um, well, let me just do it. Uh, I'm going to, okay, so, so I want that Muroc image, and it's in, I have that image in another folder someplace else, and, and I, it's, I got lots of those images. I'm just going to find one on here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to do uh, add uh, existing item. And I'm going to find my another Miroc image. Uh, this is, um, let's go to my documents. I'm going to go to my, down my folder. I just, I uh, may, uh, the student download, which is in here. Miroc student download, you should see these. And uh, click on uh, exercises and click on number one here. And this is the old one, so I'm gonna go in here and find images. And here's the Miroc logo, add. Okay, so now I got the Miroc logo right there. And I'm gonna put that right up here. So to do that, I'm going to do, um, oh, go over here and find, is there an image? Oh, here's image. Put the image over here. There's the image. And uh, let me um, see what properties we got here. Ah, image URL, click here. And I'm going to go into my images, and there's my logo, and there it is. Nice Maroc Books logo. Okay, where are we in the book here? Oh, this is just telling us how we can start, start, uh, or where the solution file is and so on. Okay, so, so let me just, I guess I can show you that. All right, so uh, if we execute this, if I just run it, It looks like that. No, it looks like this. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this. And the point is, if I close this, let me save it. And let me close this particular solution. Now, I can actually... Go to my projects, Visual Studio projects, 
and find my projects and find my web no what is what's, what's my fuel oh, here chapter 2 future value 300 that's the one I just was working on and this I can just double click that to start it up so that's one way to start it up you know you can start it up other ways if, if you're on the you can probably start it up uh, recent file recent projects it's this one you can start it up that way and uh, so so anyway that's just what they wanted to show you so I'm going to just double click on that start it back up again here we are we started a third instance down here that's okay and we're back <clears throat> all right so let's uh that's how you open a project okay now I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the things on this screen here. I'm gonna put a um, I'm gonna put this 401 future value calculator I'm gonna put uh, I'll show you this from over here I'm gonna put this on I'm gonna put I'm going to put a table. I'm going to put some labels here. I'm going to put a drop down list. I'm going to put a couple of text boxes and a, another a label here. And I'm going to put a calculate button and a clear button. And I'm going to put these validation controls right there, like that. And okay, so let's, let's uh, do that. So here I am in my, the one I'm working on. And let's see, put a, um, I think I can, I'm just going to put, go over to source. I can't seem to find H1 over here anywhere. So I'm just going to go over to source. And right underneath the uh, image here, there's that image. I'm going to just do H1 close. And right here I'm going to type um, 401k future value calculator okay and uh, let's see what that looks like oh yeah that's what that's nice okay and uh, next I'm gonna put a table go back here for a table I can just uh, Oh, I hate that. Let me just try to do table, insert table, and I'm going to want a table that is uh, six rows, two columns. Uh, I can just leave. I'll just leave it. Leave this stuff. But um, you can change the percent. So if it if it's hundred percent, it means it's going to go all the way across. And you can adjust the widths of the columns, but the last column is going to go all the way across to the uh, end, end there. That's okay. This is good. Okay, so now we have a table there. I'm going to see what this looks like. Okay, this is a bummer because the table ended up being inserted in between the ta H1 tag. See, this is the end of the H1 tag. Beginning of the H1 tag. I got to figure out how to keep that from happening. But let's just take this H1 tag here and cut it out and put it here. And then let's press enter. And now we will have our table below our H1 tag. And that's important because we didn't want all of the table values here to be H1 size. If that, if that could happen. All right, so let's just uh, uh, fill fill in um, this here. We have monthly investment, interest rate, number of years, and future value. So there's going to be, uh, let me just throw some labels in here. This is monthly investment. And this is... Um, Go 
put one here. Oops. Another one here. And another one here. And we want a uh, button, a drop down list over here. And we want a uh, text box here and a text box here and a, another label here. And we want a button button here and another button here. Okay, and we also want some Uh, we can adjust the size of the table, the width, the first column of the table by going like this. And I guess we can maybe adjust this by going, uh, oh, I guess that works too. <clears throat> and down here, we want to put some um, uh, validate, validators. So we want to put a, a validation. We want to put a Required field validator for the um, interest rate. I'm going to, I better put these labels here. Interest rate, number of years, future value. Oops. Um, interest rate and um, number of years number of years and this one is future value and I'm going to call this thing LBL future value and that's just where it's going to go and um, I'm going to name it LBL future value And uh, I'm going to name this thing DDL Monthly Investment. And I'm going to name this thing EXT Interest Rate. And I'm going to name this one TXT years and I'm going to name this one BTN uh, calculate and I'm going to name this one oop clear and I actually while I'm here, I'm going to say this one does not cause validation. Basically, what that what that setting is, is that if the default is true, and these are controls, if if they're ever uh, clicked or changed, um, it'll cause the uh, the validation code to execute. So, um, in other words. You know, so so we can have it run like most of the time or all the time. So whenever it detects that there's not something correct here, it'll it'll just display that thing down at the bottom. It's, it doesn't. It's not a pop up or anything, so it's not that obtrusive. Uh, but also, um, um, uh, there's times when we don't want the validation to be checked, and that's namely this clear button because uh, when we clear it. 
uh, there's going to be, you know, empty fields and it's going to cause the validation not to be uh, correct. So this is clear and let's call this one calculate. Let's have this say calculate. And uh, okay, so let me finish up this re required range validator. What else can we do? Can we make it red? Let's make it red. Red. It's a nice red right there. And so this is the required field validator, and this is going to be um, interest rate required. Message. Interest, interest rate rate required. And we're going to validate. This is a required field, and it's going to be looking at... Um, Control to validate. We, we want to look at interest rate. Okay, that's all we need to do for that. Uh, let's put another one in here for um, uh, interest rate required. Now I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it back over here again. Uh, space, space. Hope that works. And I'm going to put another, uh, I'm going to put a range validator. Does that work? Oh, yeah. And for this range of validator, I want to say interest rate must be, what is it? What is it? Uh, interest rate must be between 1 and 20. The error message is going to be interest rate must be between 1 and 20. And that's going to be looking at the interest rate and let's make it red let's make it a darker red just to be different okay interest rate required interest interest rate must be between 1 and 20 and then let's add another validator on there and that would be um, number of years re is required And that will be a uh, field validator. And it's going to be um, in a number of years is required. And let's make that one red also. And uh, uh, you can also have it be out of range, so it's going to be a range validator. And this is going to be cost. This is going to say years must be from one to forty-five. Oops. Oops. Here we go. Years must be between 1 and 45. And let's make it red. Let's make it um, this color red, just to be weird. Okay. So now we have, oh, did I say what to look at? Control to validate years. Did I do this one too? Control to validate. No, I did not. Years. And this one is interest rate, and this one is interest rate. Okay, so I got all my validators in there, and um, okay, I'm going to see what this looks like. So if I click on Firefox. We end up with um, this. And what that is, it says 
unobtrusive validation mode requires jQuery. God, I can't believe they make this the default. So let's close this, and there's a couple of ways that we can take care of that little error message. Let's look and see what it is. Um, tables, controls, drop down list. Validators. Ah, here we go. No, not this. Ah, unobtrusive validation mode. You look over here, it says, 4.5 and later have a feature called unobtrusive validation to be aware of. And basically, it's uh, this is all client-side validation. It's all client-side validation. It's JavaScript. Uh, it, it checks it before this before it goes back to the server. Uh, it's just that uh, before 4.5, it um, it used it um, um, it uses just HTML or it uses JavaScript that it would put in there. But uh, after 4.5, it it uh, it allows you to uh, use jQuery, and so you got to actually install the jQuery package. I won't do that now, but but we're going to do that. Uh, maybe I'll do it on Tuesday. Um, uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, we haven't installed jQuery. I could install jQuery, and maybe I'll install jQuery next time. But this time, I'm going to show you how to do it when you don't install jQuery, and uh, you do that by either this way or this way. Okay. The second way here is uh, just to put app settings. Can I copy? It doesn't let me copy, does it? Um, okay, uh, or we can do it this way, unobtrusive validation. Okay, so this is this this will turn it off for the whole web application, and this will just turn it off a page at a time. So if, if, if we do it a page at a time, we would do it like this. Uh, double click out here someplace. And you just do un -ub un obtrusive validation mode equals un obtrusive validation mode dot none. Okay, that'll do it. And now it seems to let us uh, work it. I, I'm going to try clicking this. What happens? Ah, oh, see, it, the the validation does does in fact work. Interest rate required, number of years required. What happens? You put in a two. Interest rate must be between one and twenty. What? Oh, I forgot to put the ranges. You have to specify one and twenty, and for this one, you have to specify uh, one and forty-five. So let's do that. I'm going to close this, shut this off, forget about those. So click on the range one, and you go over here, and you go uh, minimum, va maximum value is 20, and minimum value is 1. That takes care of that one. And then for this one, maximum value is 45, and minimum is 1. Okay, that'll work. Um, let's um, okay. Let's go back and see what else. See what other what else they have us do. Oh, if we were to do this one, we go into the web config and do this app settings. Uh, you go here. You go into a solution explorer and you go into here, and you can um, you know it's in here. You can put it in here, and what you would put in here is if you can go peek over here and you can see what's over here because they do it that way this way and this one this thing here app settings where you set unobtrusive validation mode to none and that'll do it for all the the entire um, project so uh and but anyway so i did it the other way
Uh, okay, so uh, now we're going to add some. Okay, this. So this here, this this just gets added in. What does it say about it? Uh, this 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 is for the table. If you look here, uh, it's this table here. Um, anyway, when you go to um, go to the source, I'm talking about this right here. And these actual values here are the result of my dragging. See, this is one f whatever. If I go back to here and I make it some diff something different. That's kind of weird. But anyway, um, that's what this is. That messes with these numbers here. Uh, uh, yeah, these. This is just. It's just pointing out all the ASP codes. So this is. These are auto styles. This, this is the style. Auto style one. That's this. That's CSS. We're going to get much more into CSS chapter three. I think. Should learn all that. Uh, this this is what what expands out into the select options right here. This ex, this is the text box. This is another text box. This is the label that's gonna where we're gonna write the future value after it's calculated. Um, this is these are blank blank rows in the table, and then we got the calculate buttons here. And these and then these here's the ASP. The, this translates into JavaScript. For the range validators, and um, so all buttons convert to submit buttons. You know, I don't. Um, I suppose there's other button types, but uh, they're, by default they're submit buttons. So everything's a submit button. And here's when we where we can actually start uh, throwing in some code here now. So here, and I. I uh, didn't think I was going to get this far today, but let's throw some code in. Uh, monthly investment equals, what are we making it? Oh, we just put go down here to the code. Oh, uh, here is where we load the... Uh, this loads up the drop down. So let's let's load the drop down. I don't think I can remember this. Let's see how we can figure this out. I can remember it. Take this here. Take this here. Take this here. Get rid of. I want this one up, and I want this one up. I'm gonna put this here. And I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to want this. Uh, and it's going to go right in. It's a code behind. Here we go. Um, right here. I'm going to put if is, if it is not post back, it is not post back. Then for int i equals fifty i is less than or equal to five hundred. 
i plus 50, uh, 50 at a time, um, ddl monthly investment dot items dot add, and we're going to add the, we're going to add i, but as a string, to string. And so we can just uh, run this. And now we get this. Look at that. It's all nice and populated. Mm, nice. All right. Let's see what else we can throw in here. Button calculate. Let's throw in button calculate. Is there something that's button to click? No, that's not on button to click. Oh, I never named these buttons, did I? I thought I named them. Let me go here and go here. This one, calculate. Now, I, can I just, I don't know, do I double click on this? No, that's not how I do it. Oh, I do. Whoa, here I am. All right. <clears throat> So let's do this. If is valid, is valid, uh-oh, why isn't it giving me, did I not c create that or something? Oh. Um, is valid. Now let me just find where I am. Then um, it, do this. Uh, integer uh, monthly investment. I'm creating a new variable here. It equals um, convert. Convert to int 32. Uh, DDL monthly monthly investment selected value. And then um, <clears throat> Decimal yearly creating a new variable here interest rate equals convert to int thirty two uh, txt interest rate dot txt Int years equals convert to int 32 uh, txt years dot txt. Decimal future value. L U E equals this dot calculate a future. Hmm? Oh, I didn't name the button, did I? Calculate, it's this button. Oops. What's going on? It's just plain old calculate. I have to create this function. There's the function. Hmm. OK. 
Okay, got to create that function too. This uh, monthly investment. Oh, this is calculate. Wait a second. What am I doing here? This is what I'm doing. Future value equals. I have to create this function. Don't say button calculate. Calculate future future value. And there's going to be some parameters, I guess. And uh, those parameters are going to be monthly investment, comma, yearly interest rate, comma, years. And then uh, last thing I want to do is I want to write into that label future value dot text equals future value dot two string uh, currency. Okay, that's that. And but I got to define this function here, this little function here. And so why don't I do that? I'll type that in. I'm going to do that uh, right after the button calculate. And so right here, here, I'm going to do a protected decimal calculate future value int monthly monthly investment comma decimal yearly interest rate comma int years and this is going to be this particular function here uh, define a value uh, variable months equals years times 12 and say decimal monthly interest rate equals yearly interest rate divided by 12 divided by 100 to get a decimal uh, decimal future value equals zero and then four int i equals zero zero i is less than months uh, and i plus plus future value equals future value plus monthly investment times one plus monthly interest rate. Then return or end end this end it. Return future value. Okay, so that's calculating future value, and I want to throw in this button clear while I'm at it. So can I do that? So let's see. Go here. What happens if I double click here? Here we go. It's this. Guess I must not have named it. Uh, DDL monthly investment dot selected value selected index equals zero. And we'll set text interest rate. Text equals nothing. And text years dot txt equals nothing. 
and LBL future value equals nothing. Okay, now everything equals nothing. Why does it look like that? Should I make it double? Do this and like that better. This one likes it better. All right. So, got anything else here? Don't see much else there. Okay, let's check this out. Build errors. Click no. What do we got here? Ooh, some missing stuffs. Line 33. Line 33, first of all. All right. And uh, 25, there's some around 25. Oh, text. There we go. Now let's try it. Uh, th line 33, line 33, line 32. All right, line 33, and there was something here. Oh, what should this be? Uh, what was that? Did I miss something? Where was yearly interest rate calculated? Oh, it should have come in as a, right here, yearly interest rate. There we go. And uh, let's see, let's uh, try an interest rate of three and a number of years of. Hmm. Still is not. What did I do wrong? Um. It is this one, and the properties are text and range validator on interest rate, the maximum value is 20, and the minimum value is 1. What am I doing wrong? Should this, maybe this should not be a string, maybe it should be an integer. And this one the same, maybe it looks like this one. Ninja. Let's see. Three. Ah, looking good. Five years. And is that right? I don't know. Let's check with this one. I'm going to say, uh, oh, um, chapter one. Okay, 5310, okay, 5310 is 7004. 5310 is 7004, yes. Clear, that's right. Uh, now what else I do this? Oh, yeah, rate interest rate required, uh, minus one. Oh, yeah. Uh, minus one. Yeah. One. Yeah. Two. Okay. And it is 413. Are there any questions? Thank you for...
watching.